All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. I hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week. Had a good weekend, an extended weekend. Happy Easter to everybody if you celebrate that. We are now going back into the stock market with a full week this week. Should be pretty interesting. We had PCE on Friday, and also Jerome Powell speaking while the market was closed. Apparently, the futures did like that because now we are gapped up this Sunday night, basically on everything on ES which is the S&P, NQ, which is the NASDAQ, and also RTY, which is basically the IWM or small and mid caps, all gapping up tonight. So as long as we hold overnight, everything looking pretty bullish. PCE came in line. I would say the data was relatively neutral and maybe the market just took that as a positive. Also, Jerome Powell really didn't say anything new. And sometimes it's honestly just good for the market for him not to say anything new at all. Because if the market is still optimistic about rate cuts, about inflation going down, about economic growth, then there's really no reason to change the course. And we were seeing that reflect in the price action. But for this week, we do have a couple of data sets. I would say some pretty important ones. Starting off Monday on April 1st, we do have the S&P US manufacturing PMIs. The PMIs always have a chance to move us and bring some volatility. Also have ISM manufacturing. This is usually always a big one. So definitely pay attention to that. And then on Tuesday, one of the most important labor data sets it's going to be Jolt's job openings. That's at 10 a.m. So 30 minutes after the bell, there's likely going to be some pretty big volatility. The Jolt's job openings usually does bring some type of knee-jerk reaction either way, and it brings day trading opportunities. Also, I have a couple of Fed speakers that day. We have Bowman, Loretta, and Dolly speaking. And on Wednesday, another PMI reading. This time, it's going to be S&P US Services PMI. So we have manufacturing on Monday services on Wednesday. Also have ISM services that can definitely move us. Really anything ISM, manufacturing or services, usually a pretty big one. Looks like we have Fed Chair Jerome Powell speaking again at 1210. Not exactly sure how big this event will be, but I doubt he's going to say anything new. It might be a nothing burger for the market. And then on Thursday, we are very stocked for Fed speakers. We have Harker, Barkin, Goolsby, Mester, and Kashkari. And then on Friday, we have the biggest labor data set. It's going to be non-farm payrolls, the unemployment rate, and also hourly wages. Also, a couple of Fed speakers We're going to have Barkin, Logan, and Bowman, and also consumer credit at three. Most important is going to be the non-farm payrolls. That's the big one of the week. Second, probably going to be Joe's job openings. Third, I would say is going to be the PMIs and also the ISM services in ISM manufacturing. And then also, like I said, PMIs, also services and manufacturing, those can move us as well. So pretty stacked for data this week. Definitely pay attention to all of it. Basically, every single day could have a market moving event. And on to seasonality for this week. It looks like we are coming into this week, April 1st to the 5th. It's going to be another bullish week. Last week was also relatively bullish. I believe the winning trade percentage last week is also the same as this week at 65%. We have a summarized profit of 10%. So that's all the gains put together over the last 20 years. And it looks like we have 13 gains and 7 losses the last 20 years for this period. If we go down to 10 years for the most recent years, you can see it's actually relatively flat, which is interesting. We only have winning trades at 50% to the short side, summarized profit at negative 3%, with gains at 5 and losses at 5 the last 10 years. So obviously the 20-year data set has much more data implemented into it, and I would say we could look at the 20-year data set with a little bit more confidence, but it's good to look at the 10 year also so we can get an idea of recent market conditions so we don't have as much data in the 10 year data set but still good to look at both you can see the 10 year looking kind of flat with the 20 year at an ultra bull and according to the stock almanac as well this week is also bullish on that end as well i believe the almanac accounts for either 50 to 100 years of data and i believe there's bull icons for monday tuesday and wednesday maybe they are different dates but either way this week is historically bullish on the Almanax front and also this 20-year data set on the seasonality. So looking pretty good. If we have the markets breaking 52-week highs and staying over 52-week highs, also holding your 9 and 21 EMA combo on the SPY or the indexes, I don't really see any reason for us to go low or anything unless we break back under the 52-week highs, make it new resistance, also start breaking your moving averages, etc. So looking pretty bullish. Nothing's really changed. Seasonality is good. Indexes look good for now. Market reacted positively to Friday's data. All right, not to the individual setups. I do have three this week, all looking at calls again. Last week, I feel like the market was so choppy. There was really only like one, I would say, 
that was a good setup in our list last week, and that was Starbucks gave at least a 2% rally off the demand zone that we were looking at, but TSM kind of fell back into 135s. I feel like TSM is still a pretty good setup over 135 to 133. So if it's holding over that, that means it's holding a back test and structure low, and it could bounce back up. TSM has also not really broken its moving averages with an obvious break yet. It's still holding structure, and overall, I feel like if NVIDIA bounces and SMH is holding up, I feel like TSM has a chance to bounce as well. I do have one single call for April 19 from last week. We are down maybe about 40% on that right now. But I did just start with one, so it's not hurting me too bad. I'm going to hold that into next week. Hopefully, we can see a bounce in TSM. But I'm hoping this week we have some good setups because the market was just choppy last week. I mean, the SPY, the QQQ really didn't go anywhere, and neither did a lot of stocks, especially semis. Semis kind of were very slow, and we saw that rotation into IWM, small mid caps, etc. But for our first one here, we're looking at Amazon. This is actually more of a short-term trade setup just because Amazon is so high already. This is kind of a momentum scalp. You can see we have a big one day ascending triangle formation. You have a test one, a test two, test three, test four bounce. This trend line is very strong. You also have one rejection here, basically a rejection here and a short term rejection here, which is flat top resistance, flat top resistance plus higher lows holding equals ascending triangle as such. So with ascending triangles, obviously they're bilateral so they can break in either direction. Your trade is going to be either on a break of this if it's a blow off top and you have that confirmation over the breakout or if it breaks the lower trend line, that can also be a flush play. Right now, I'm focused to the long side, and that's obvious because we are closing over 180s. You can see this 180.14 level was a big resistance here, rejected short term here, and overall, we did close over that on Friday. So as long as the futures hold overnight, this is likely going to turn into some type of 52 week breakout play. For max upside, you really only have up to 188 before you hit resistance. So that's pretty straightforward on that end. I could show you where the 188 comes from. It's basically the all time high resistance. So you can see it double topped here back in 21 and we haven't been there since. So that's kind of where we're at. Higher lows holding, flat top resistance equals ascending triangle. Ascending triangle breaking over the resistance can turn into a bullish pattern. So it's gonna be some type of momentum scalp, maybe for day trades. I'm not sure about a short term swing. Maybe if you went with May expiration minimum to deal with drawdown risk or you know like a fake breakout, especially at this kind of level, you could do that. But I feel like this is a good short term setup just off the fact this could turn into a big velocity breakout up to 188. So keep it on watch, looks pretty good. Moving averages still holding your 9, 21 EMA combo. It's been a classic. It's been working all the way through the new year. So that's for Amazon looking at calls, mostly a short term setup for day trades or scalps with a potential for a swing trade, I guess, if you bought time to deal with drawdown risk or a fake breakout. Uh, up to 188. All right, number two, we're going on to Walgreens. So this is actually setting up very similar to its last wedge breakout. You can see our last wedge here. I believe I posted this in the trade ideas list before, all the way back in December. Whenever this wedge was forming, whenever it broke out, I'm pretty sure we did post this and I mentioned to look out for calls to the upside. So it's basically just a repeat or a potential repeat. Obviously the market's not going to do the same exact thing it did prior, but we are kind of getting evidence that this could turn into another big squeeze up. Maybe it could turn into a melt up as well and just go up slowly. It honestly just depends. Obviously you want a lot of volume in the market to see this kind of momentum. And you can see back in December here, we had a big breakup bar here and the volume was all over average in this period right here. So you want to see that same exact thing. Obviously, as long as it's holding over average, I feel like the momentum could get big like this for a little bit. And then you can see once the volume dropped off down here, started going back below average, that's when it started slowing down and selling back off. So you wanna see the breakout just holding volume bars like this. In this period, you can see they're all over the moving average on the volume indicator. And that's basically how you get big momentum like this. So it's off to a good start with the volume. You can see it had earnings on Thursday before the market closed early that week. So there's obviously a lot of activity from the earnings and started off with a pretty good breakout bar with good volume. Obviously, you just want to see continuation, all bars holding above average for volume, and you could see some momentum just like this. We're also closing over that 9 of 21 EMA combo. MACD is also positive as well. This is still relatively in a value area. Anything near these lows, really near this 2009 support. Yes, the support is all the way from the great financial crisis, basically. 
let's say value area. Really anything down here for WBA is value. Just speaking for technical terms, I'm not talking about fundamentals here. I'm talking about technical levels. This is a value area for sure. So WBA looking at calls. I don't think this is going to be a short term setup. I like if you buy time on this May expiration minimum, maybe you could even go for June, give you lots of time. Maybe eventually you could get back up to this 27s right here. Maybe it won't go as fast as it did in this period. But if you buy a lot of time, you can give it room. You can see that it retrace back up to the 27s obviously this 2463 which is this resistance right here that could be an issue also that 2377 this rejection area right here that could also be an issue as well so make sure to watch those but give it lots of time to retrace up and don't expect this momentum to repeat in this amount of time this is very quick i know it looks like it could just because you have the same wedge formation basically at the same value it was last time but keep your expectations low be realistic buy lots of time because stocks can trade really slow upward as well. They're not just going to go straight up like this all the time. So just keep that in mind. Buy time. Be patient. WBA looking at calls. All right. And last but not least, we're looking at BABA. I was actually a little bit hesitant to add this one to the list, but I was really struggling finding other setups. After I found Amazon and WBA, I went through the whole list of 200 plus tickers I have, and I really just couldn't find anything that wasn't already just a continuation pattern or something that wasn't already really expensive or just something that was very choppy and didn't really have that wide of trading ranges between their support and resistance. I looked at Baba here and I was a little bit skeptical because this is also choppy, but I would say this support and this resistance, there's a pretty good amount of points between that. I mean, you almost have six or seven points between resistance and support here. So I figured it could make a good trade just because you have a pretty wide range and you have room from down here up to the resistance. You wanna find an area with a lot of free space that has a lot of room from support to resistance. That's basically all trading is or trading a breakout. So if you're buying at support, you're looking for your price target at the next resistance for breakouts, you're basically buying either a downtrend line breakout or a flat top horizontal line breakout as well. Sometimes at 52 week highs, you don't have any price targets to go off of and you have to measure them yourself or just go off whole numbers. But for Baba here, we do have strong support at 70 to 71. I would call 70 to 71 a zone just because you have a short term bounce here off 71 short term bounce off this low at 70 flat. And I would say as long as that structure low is holding, we do have a chance to bounce back up to the supply or the multi top area. So you have a top here, top here, top here, top here. Four rejections, basically four bounces as well. So very choppy. And like I said, that's why I was a little bit hesitant putting this out, but I feel like China is very undervalued at the moment, especially with their political climate, uh, their real estate, their economic data. It is all very iffy. And I feel like they're just lacking foreign investment right now just due to all those issues that I just named. One that did really good was JD. They had a pretty good earnings and they've been going up since their earnings and having pretty good trading going on, especially the price action. But Baba, very undervalued. Uh, price to earnings is very low. I know for a fact it is. I believe it's either 8 to 10 right now. Uh, if you didn't know, the S&P average price to earnings is probably like 15 to 20. So Baba is very low right now in terms of price to earnings. They have a lot of free cash flow, lots of good fundamentals. They just can't get anywhere at the moment. So if you want to look at Baba, look at it as a potential long-term play. I mean, you are buying near the lows. You're buying in a chopped range. It might need some room to fart around some more. I mean, this could go on for God knows how long. Another thing it will need to do eventually, it probably will need to break out of this big downtrend line. You have a test one, a test two, and a test three rejection here. So if you can get out of that, get over 80 eventually, I feel like this can find some good momentum. But right now, it is still pretty suppressed at the moment. So basically, if you're a short-term trader, if it starts breaking under 70, you'll want to look at something else. So if you're just looking at short-term swings on this, uh, if it starts breaking under 70, just look at something else. Long-term traders, people with a lot of time that can handle drawdown, 66, 63 is this low right here. If it starts breaking under that, that's basically a game over point. That's basically your structured lows. Like I said, 71 to 70, your short term, your more long to medium term at the 66 area. So that's for Baba looking at calls. MACD is negative. So that's kind of a downer. Also have price trending under 921 EMA combo on Monday. Also trading under your 921 EMA on the one week. We will need to get over that one week one for sure. You can see that's been an issue here. It rejected short term here. 
Uh, it's been rejecting here, and the last two times it got up here rejected as well. So we'll need to get over that one week 9 of 21 EMA combo. One good thing, MACD is crossed over to the upside, so that's positive. And one week MACDs are a little bit more reliable than a short-term MACD signal, so definitely keep an eye on that. Still holding. Obviously, this has been crossed over for almost a month probably a little bit over a month and it really hasn't had any fruition but like i said that short term 70 to 71 that's a good level to watch make sure it holds over that overall needs to hold over 66 but baba looking at calls be patient buy lots of time if you can all right and on to the indexes so last week on SPY, we were really just focused on this 518.22, which is a back test level i'm pretty sure i mentioned this is probably the best area to look for at dip buy you can see why we pulled into that on tuesday basically held up that area and we did bounce the next day after that closed up almost one percent and hit 52 week high resistance so the technicals are pretty straightforward last week you had 524 as new resistance you had 518.22 as potential support or a back test you had the 508s below which was not tested at all and also 505 right below that so the levels are the same thing this week since we I mean, we basically close at the same spot. Right now with the ES futures up, we're likely going to break over this as long as it opens up where we're at right now. So you probably will have a new 52 week breakout once the market opens on Monday, as long as it holds overnight. Really never know, the market can just shit the bed if it wants to overnight, nothing has to hold. But I just wanted to mention that you probably will see this 524 breakout and your new area to look for support is going to be 524. You wanna see that same support and resistance flip you've been seeing. And that's really all the market has been. I can show you on the ES4 hour, the support and resistance flips have just been spot on every single time, basically. That's pretty much been the only way to trade, either buying back tests or going at the nine and 21 EMA combo on the one day. Like we've been covering every single week, probably for like a month or two. The nine and 21 EMA combo is just a really good way to add at a short term value area. But I'll show you these real quick. Here's a pretty strong support and resistance flip you have a breakout and resistance turning into support here tried to do it right here actually fail went back within but held up the support here you have a new resistance right here at this area turn into support right here bounced off of that and you have it again right here you have a kind of double top resistance pulls into that last week and we bounced off of that but you can just see over and over it's basically just resistance turning into support week after week so here's the es it is breaking out so you can pretty much guess that 524 on the spy is going to be broken out as long as this closes over that we will want to see a new base getting formed off of this this new resistance turning into support will probably be the best area to add at if you are just trading the momentum obviously these 52 week breakouts can be good ascending triangle breakouts are good as well just for scalps for short term stuff because lots of times you will see that quick breakout and then it'll pull back likely just due to smart money unloading supply taking profits at the 52 week highs while retail buys it and that's why it does that every single time horizontal breakouts a little bit more hard to trust that's why if you buy the back tests wait for previous resistance to turn into support that's a good value area on the short term or just add a trend lines like this or add at the one day 21 ema combo like i've been showing you so yeah that's the futures uh which is also basically the SPY or the S&P 500. We wanna see this 524 turning into a new base or support eventually. It's basically the only way to go about the SPY right now. Also, if it can pull back into 518 for some reason, that could be a good area to add as well. We have demand down here at the 510s. It's a little drop base rally zone. You have a drop base rally. So if we can get down there it's from 510 to 508, that's a good area to add. And then also 505 flat, also another multi kind of hold bounce area from right here. So that's for the SPY. Here's your moving averages. Basically last week was just another pull into the one day nine EMA. It didn't tap it directly, but either way, if you had that 518.22 that we marked, you would have been fine. You could have bought the dip at that area. It was pretty good. You see we had a pretty nice bounce for two days right there, but I would still count this as a, you know, a nine EMA bounce basically pulled into the general area. Not always going to get a direct touch. It's just a higher low that led to a higher high, which it did. This is a higher high even though it closed back within it's still a higher high not the cleanest but either way we made a you know a new high 
after making a higher low. So that's for the SPY. Make sure to mark those levels that I have. It's going to be 524.11, 518.22, 508.50, to the QQQ, which actually really didn't go anywhere last week. Tech kind of lagged the SPY and also the IWM. I think we still got some good QQQ scalps in, if I'm not mistaken. I think on the X Trades app, I logged a couple good QQQ wins for scalps for day trades. But otherwise, I mean, the QQQ really did lag last week. You can see we did not test the 52 week high resistance area. And the QQQ really didn't bounce as good on Wednesday as SPY did. SPY closed up almost 1%. QQQ only closed up 0.34%. So not that great. Uh, nothing's really changed from last week. We are still holding your one day nine and 21 EMA combo. So you can see this big wick off of the QQQ right here. I think on Monday, it did have a pretty good run up to 447s off the one day nine EMA, but then closed back down red and then just kept holding up this one day nine 21 EMA combo area basically all week. We really didn't go anywhere otherwise. Like I said, it was a very choppy week, a kind of a tough one to trade. We do have a new base at the 442s. We got 442.50, which is a bounce zone right here. Also kind of a multi bottom hold area right here that led to a bounce. So if you want to mark 442.54 to 442 or 441.90s, that's this low plus this low right here. And then for resistance, nothing has changed. Uh, it's still that 448.64, the same 52 week rejection from this big bar right here. And that's why we rejected it right here, just due to this big sell imbalance. So we tried to repeat it right here, obviously not with the same velocity. This is a very steep drop. This is a very slow drop, but it looks like tech is holding up pretty good for the futures tonight. So I'm guessing this will just turn into a one day nine EMA bounce. We could look at the futures real quick if you want. I'm guessing it's just doing the same thing. And that's why I just I keep repeating the one day 921 EMA combo. It's really the only analysis for the indexes right now. That's it. There's nothing else going on. Every single time we get into the 921 EMA combo, there is a bounce. Uh, you got a bounce here, bounce here, bounce here. And it's just over and over. Uh, it tried to break under here, but then once we reclaimed, uh, pulled in, bounce. So higher lows, higher highs. That's it, guys. Kind of breaking a little wedge or flag breakout here. Nothing crazy. So here's the NQ. It's another thing you can watch going into next week. Uh, right now on the NQ, you have resistance at 18.709. So it's probably the max upside I can see for right now. If we can't break over that, Obviously that can turn into resistance, just short term. Not a lot of volatility in the market right now. The VIX is very low. So really any dips are very slow and they're not very fast. And we're not seeing drops or ATRs widen like we you know, saw in this little period right here. Our drops last week are very small uh, and they were bought back up pretty quick. You can see, I mean, it's just chopped guys. But now we're starting to break out of this little structure. So that's interesting watching that really just looking for a move up into that 52 week high res. And that's about it. And I'm guessing that equates to the the 448.60s on the QQQ. So that 52 week high res on NQ is probably this 52 week high res on QQQ. So that would take you up to the 448s about here. And that can turn into res if we don't break it out. But as long as you've been buying at that 921 EMA combo, it's been treating you well. It was really hard for me to get bearish on the QQQ just due to the fact that we did not close under that 433 structures we were looking at a couple weeks ago. It held that up, bounced off of it. So once it starts holding this, you know, three, four or five bottoms, it's showing strong support and you really can't do anything about it, especially if we're not closing inside the gap, it's not going to flush. So that's why it's been tough. Obviously, you can watch 448.64 for put scalps. If we can get up there, show a nice rejection bar in the 15 minute, you could always try to take a quick scalp. But for swing trades, I don't really see any confirmation uh, for put swings right now. You really don't have a volatility signal. You don't have really anything to go off of, no reversal signal or anything. It keeps holding your moving averages, keeps holding your supports, your structure lows, and nothing's really changing. So need to wait for some things to change. Need to wait for a change of behavior. And I feel like the market will show a pretty obvious change once it's time. Right now, we just don't have that. So that's for QQQ. Just make sure the one day 921 EMA combo is holding just like the SPY. Obviously, we'll need to get over that 448s 
if they can break over that, there could be some pretty big velocity for a 52 week high breakout. 52 week high breakouts are a little bit more tough. They really don't last very long until they get a pullback. Like you might get one big breakout bar like this, and then it'll pull back, make a higher low, keep doing the same thing put in just a little bit higher like this one pull back and it just keeps repeating that so it's a little bit hard to trade those vertical breakouts or horizontal line breakouts but you can day trade them and they can make you know make you some quick money uh, on a good trend day with a lot of volume all right and last but not least we'll go over the vix just because i feel like the vix is getting into an interesting zone so i haven't really been looking at the vix just because it really has been boring, hasn't really been going anywhere. But when it comes to VIX, there's a pretty straightforward range that's going off of right now. You have the 1237 to 1182 lows with an obvious resistance level at 1540. Got a rejection here, a rejection here. Price falls back under right here, right here. Rejection here, big wick rejection right here. So multiple rejections of the 15s to 16 area. You can see the 16 is also a factor. Also have a wick high at the 1794s. So it's been very tight. I mean, we used to say that you really don't want to short the market until VIX is over 20, but now the VIX is so low. I feel like this 15 to 16 area is a volatility sweet spot. It'll probably need to get over 15 to 16 to show a signal for us to short the market. Just because volatility has been so tight and contracted, a lot of things have changed. So that 20 used to be kind of a sweet spot. Once the VIX got over 20, you could really kind of start opening puts and buying protection. And it gave us a good reason because once the VIX got over 20, you would see very big swings in the market, especially in 2022. Once it got over that 20 area, I mean, shit really hit the fan. And there was a reason to buy protection. Now, not so much. 20 is almost acting as a resistance area since 2023. You could see every time it gets to 20, uh, back here in May 23, big rejections at 20. We reached the 20s in October 23, rejected there. So now we've been hanging at lows basically since the new year. So for about four months from December to now, this 15, 1794 and 1182 area has basically been our trading range for the VIX. But every time it gets down to this 1273, you can see there's some type of reaction. If a big push up bar right here off 1273, if a big push up bar right here off 1237, if a little hold up area and bounce off the 1237 here, right here, and right here. Short term reaction area right here, but we really didn't see any follow through last week. So I was basically looking for some type of volatility signal last week, just in case 1237 wanted to hold. It has been holding still. So I feel like there's still a chance it could get back up to the 15s. And then once it gets up to the 15s, you probably you know want to be careful because volatility likely will sell back off short term again and the market would bounce very aggressively. Otherwise, short term, you probably want to get over this 1367, which is, I believe, Monday's high. So if we can get over that little short term level right there, that could shoot us up to the 15s. But otherwise, I mean, we're still just hanging at the lows. There's no volatility signal yet. Just mark that 1367. If we do get a push over that, that's a good short term volatility signal. Maybe you could go for a put scalp on the SPY. If it starts closing over 1367, that likely will take us up to 1540, et cetera. Overall, the market will need to get under 1237 and 1182 which is a structure low right here that would probably bring a really slow market so i'm hoping that it won't break under that i'm hoping that volatility can get back up to the 15s or so that would likely bring a little dip in the market and a good one to buy as well so vix gets up to 15 that gives a good dip we buy it, volatility sells off aggressively, market bounces aggressively as well. So that's kind of my dream scenario right now. Just make sure to mark these levels, 1237, 1182. That's your structure lows. Your short-term breakout area for a volatility signal, you want to break over 1367. If we get over that, lots of free space up to 1540. And it could get up there very quick. I mean, you could see it can get up there in one bar if it wants to. So just wait for that signal. Do not short the market until you get that breakout of 1367 on the VIX. The VIX usually gives some pretty obvious signals when it wants the market to go lower and when people start piling into hedges. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I need to go ahead and get this chopped up, sent out, all that good stuff, or I will be up all night. So I love you guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'm out. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with a trading mentor today, completely free of charge.